Oh, I'm liking that. And you know, they'll uh, start to overflow and look even prettier as the season goes on. Hey guys, what's growing? It's Heather at Bush Puppy Farm. So it's a really beautiful but warm day. I think we're gonna get almost to 78 degrees Fahrenheit today. That's pretty warm compared to how it's been in the 50s. <laughs> so um, that's great because it means things are gonna start putting on growth finally. So I've had a really busy morning. I uh, took all the bouquets I made yesterday and all those trays of seedlings um, over to the retailer uh, this morning. We got them all set up and I'm super excited. It's so nice. You know, it's funny. Uh, it's exciting when you have a greenhouse full of seedlings um, because that's like excitement of new growth, but it's also super exciting when you can clear them all out, <laughs> whether that means planting or in my case, selling them. Um, so I only have a few left here, which is excellent. Uh, the ones that I have left are um, herbs and, no, no, I'm sorry. I have a tray of peppers and then I have one tray that's a vegetable garden in a box. I have some Eryngium and Cosmos that are gonna go here and also at home. And that's about it, which is super great. I love it. So the first thing I'm gonna do, which I couldn't do yesterday because of the um, Aiden, I needed to go pick up Aiden. Poor thing, he's inherited my chronic migraine and uh, he's had chronic migraine since he was seven. It was uh, abdominal migraine first, and that, that is a beast because very few people know about it, very few doctors know about it. It took a long time to get a diagnosis. But now that he's 15, it's mostly just the regular headache migraines. Um, not any less fun or any more fun, but uh, anyway, so there's that. So I am right now going to get my fer fertilizer out and my backpack sprayer and go get the high tunnel and as much around here uh, fertilized as possible. Number one, it's Friday, it's fertilizer Friday, but two, some of them, like the asters are looking, no, the dianthus are looking awful. They're yellow, they need, they need nutrition. So I'm gonna get that done and then I'm gonna lay the final bit of irrigation and then that's probably all I'm gonna be able to fit in before I have to go pick up Dylan um, and head back home and do more work, which I think will be some more planting in the cottage garden. Okay, this is my backpack sprayer. Um, I have one at home as well, uh, which is actually a little bit bigger. This is a three gallon backpack sprayer. Um, it's called backpack because you wear it on your back, um, <laughs> which is kind of the only way to do this because it's, it's really heavy. Um, it's got a, a hand crank here, and then this is uh, a mister here that you can uh, change the, you know, whether it's like a straight stream or a mist. So uh, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put, this is, uh, Fish emulsion with kelp, which is a great fertilizer, uh, gentle fertilizer for seedlings. I am going to put this screen up here in the top um, first because uh, there's even uh, there's some solids in here that you don't want, you know, clogging up your hose. And this is three gallons, and so um, let's see. Two tablespoons per one gallon of water. So I'm gonna put six tablespoons in here, um, roughly. I mean, if you overdo it a little bit, it's nothing's gonna, no, nothing bad will happen. <laughs> one, two, three, four, five, six. All right. Now we just fill it with water. So a gallon of water is roughly eight pounds. Three gallons would be 24 pounds. Not super heavy, but the five gallon ones, those are pretty rough. <laughs> kind of hard to handle. Okay, so we put the lid on. I set it up on a table like this because it is heavy and it's better for me to do it this way than to potentially have to yank it up and hurt my back. All right. So now, once I pump this, it will pressurize and spray.
is full Here and drink in hand Choosing gratitude Is high free Well, unfortunately, all I got done was the fertilizing, but that actually was the number one thing that I really wanted to get done. So uh, it's time to go so I can pick up my son. But I did deeply water the beds that don't yet have the irrigation hooked up to them or fixed. Um, so I'm gonna grab some of these Cosmos. We'll get in the car and go get Dylan and then uh, do some planting at home. Okie dokie, so our next project is to hang our hanging baskets that we made the other day. I'm actually gonna put them on these posts. That's still oozing stuff. This is redwood. I'm gonna put them on these posts on either side of the chicken run. Um, hopefully they won't get in the way. That's my only concern. If I hang it here, oh, that might be a problem. Let me uh, put this, hang this one and see, cause it might get in the way of getting in and out. Um, yeah, let me see how this is gonna go. This one will be okay. But I'm gonna go ahead and attach this and see if uh, when I hang the basket, if it just is, gets too much in the way of the, hand, the door handle and stuff. We are going to pre-drill holes because if I've learned nothing else, it's that <laughs> this saves a whole lot of time <laughs> and energy and effort. All right, I'm gonna move it over here to the side a little bit, not too much. All right, now I'm gonna go grab the basket and see if this is gonna work. Hmm. Looks mighty pretty. I don't think it gets in the way too much. And I really like the way it looks. I'm gonna go on and add the other one over there. Oh, I'm liking that. And you know, they'll uh, start to overflow and look even prettier as the season goes on. Yeah, I like that. You do have to go around this one a little bit to get in, but I think it'll be fine and it's decorative and yeah, that makes me happy. They are a little bit low, but it's not enough that it's bothering me. So we'll see how it goes. I'll live with it for a week or so and if I end up not liking it, then I'll find a new place for them. So the next job I want to tackle is um, this bed. I put this stuff in here um, years ago and literally haven't touched it since. The irrigation has been messed up on it. Like I haven't really done anything with it. And I really hate all of the heavenly bamboo back there, Nandina. Um, so I might actually go back there and chop a bunch of it down. Uh, it'll keep coming back. It's super invasive. But I think what I'm going to do, I have plants. I'm going to put some in here where things have died back. And then I'll give it a whole layer of compost because it's got leaf mulch here from, you know, the, the autumn. And that's great. That'll stay there. And then the compost on top of it, that should help feed the soil quite a bit. And uh, then I'm going to fix the irrigation so it actually runs. There is an octopus here where um, a whole bunch of lines come off of it. And I don't think any of them actually work. So I'm going to need to test this zone. I think we've had this zone off for quite some time. Uh, and you can see where the bamboo is just popping up. It's not true bamboo. It's called heavenly bamboo, Nandina. Uh, but super invasive and just it's really hard to get rid of goes down really deep so once you get it you just have to keep cutting it back and it's a pain this is a dawn redwood tree tree and uh, I keep cutting it way back I 
it's really almost impossible to dig out. Uh, dawn redwoods are deciduous, so they drop all of their leaves in the late fall and they stay bare um, until the spring when they get new growth on them. Um, I mean, very pretty. It's a redwood, but you know, not like our evergreen redwoods that are native here. So I also have a euphorbia in here that's kind of out of control. And this is a lavender of some sort. And that back there is some kind of penstemon. At least that's what I remember. Here's another euphorbia. This one's really pretty. And there's another penstemon, more lavender. And then these guys, I don't even remember what they are. And they haven't flowered in years. Uh, they started out as little tiny plants. So I'm going to add some plants in here and compost. And I think it will be really nice to get this all cleaned up and looking good. So the, uh, the three varieties I have here to put in this bed um, are Facilia campanula. This is uh, Desert Canterbury Bells. Um, cobalt blue flowers, and you can see this one's already starting here. Hopefully it'll focus on that. Uh, cobalt blue flowers and let's see blues in the spring blooms in the spring bees love it and it's drought tolerant so it's important for this bed to pretty pretty much drought tolerant there's lavender in here there's euphorbia um, and penstemon none of those things like too much water so this is perfect um, and i think the blue will be really pretty because so i have three of those because the penstemon that i have in here is red um, so we'll have red and blue and purple from the lavender. And then I have three Clarkias. These are also California natives. Uh, this is Clarkia rubicunda um, shimini, and these are carmine blooms. Uh, it's uh, drought tolerant and deer tolerant, um, needing full sun. And you can see this is a full sun location. Um, so it's great to be drought tolerant again and also deer tolerant because it, towards the end of the season um, when there's not as much water the deer are really thirsty and they typically eat vegetation just to get fluid so um, the, and these are really succulent uh, stems and leaves and, but apparently they don't uh, really bother them however I have known with that being said uh, deer will eat anything if they are hungry enough including like poisonous things so okay so I have uh, shimini and then I have um, clarkia scarlet and these are a deep red so I'm going to and these are good size seedlings so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna place these around I'm gonna pull out as much of the um, Nandina as I can uh, put these guys in cover the whole bed with a nice top layer i'll top dress it with compost and uh, give it a deep deep watering it won't get uh, the irrigation fixed today because i need to the irrigation tools are still out at the farm which i'm going to finish tomorrow so um, as long as i get it give it a nice deep drink um, today it should it should be good and that new layer of compost will act as a mulch to hold in um, the uh, moisture as well so let's get started
so much better. <laughs> Planted and watered in and compost on top. It just looks so much better. Cleaner, uh, tidier. Yeah, and I think these plants will settle in pretty easily. So once I can get the uh, irrigation all set, rerun there, then we'll be good to go. Otherwise, I'm just going to keep watering this every, every other day or on hot days every day. Um, to make sure that they get settled in and everything gets the water that it needs. Okay, so tomorrow it's back out to the farm. Um, finally get the irrigation done. I think Mike's gonna come with me and do all the string trimming, which is awesome. Uh, maybe I can get the tulips pulled up and the zinnias put in the ground and yeah, just getting making a little more progress there. I actually feel relieved, like a lot got done this week. Um, having all those seedlings taken care of and the next couple days, um, we're going to be in the 80s, which will really jumpstart a lot of stuff. Uh, and then we'll go back down to our normal average temperatures for this time of year, which is in the upper 60s, low 70s. And that's still good growing weather. So, um, yeah, I think we're finally past, I hope, uh, the uh, super cold night times. Um, and things were, are going to start picking up, which is great. I really need that mentally and emotionally. <laughs> so thank you so much for hanging out with me today. I hope you have a wonderful time in your garden and you have a wonderful weekend and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.